G'day Ziggy D here and welcome back to Diablo 3 AH Free. Uh, I've just been doing a little bit of shopping in Act 3 and today we're going to be going and lighting some signal fires and possibly raising some catapults depending on how much time we have. So in my shopping today I've, uh, I've happened to buy a little bit of dye. You also see that I've upgraded to the next level of potions here which does 2500 life which is almost all of my life in one hit so they should be pretty good. And uh, I, I was feeling a little bit whimsical today, so I decided to get some dyes. So I got two brown and two green. Let's um, let's see what we can do with this. Let's have a nice vibrant green helmet there. Oh, that's nice. That actually looks pretty good. Uh, maybe let's get some. We'll get some brown boots. Uh, I was kind of disappointed with how that turned out. Uh, let's go. Oh wow, I'm kind of disappointed. Okay, right, let's go. Let's go get the rest of the green dyes. Let's go full green. This is this is um, an important strategy for hardcore. Is uh, making sure that your die is uh, is correct and oh I think I just used die twice on the gloves there oh well <laughs> yeah this this is this is important just trust me on that one for hardcore I've, I haven't led you guys astray with wow I just sold my die I haven't led you guys astray with my hardcore advice yet so I would just trust me on this look at that man that's sick all right. <laughs> So, um, in other news, I've changed up my skills, obviously, since the boss battle. I'm still going for Zombie Handler. Uh, someone mentioned using Pierce the Veil, since I wasn't using too much mana, and I think that's a pretty good idea. I want to start uh, getting a bit more DPS-oriented, while still keeping a fair bit of safety, so the Zombie Handler and keeping my pets and things like that, keeping Spirit Walk. But, um, yeah, I'm going for a bit more damage. So I've got Pierce the Veil. I've changed to Groping Ill grass to the, on Grasp of the Dead, so more damage rather than the more slowing. Uh, and I'm going to try out Locust Swarm. I saw someone doing some sick farming with this in Inferno, and I know I'm in uh, Hardcore and only level 28, level 27 or something, but <laughs> uh, I'm going to try it out and see how it looks. And uh, I'm, I am I realised that I'm one level away from getting the next Fireborn Broom, so that should be pretty cool. Rather than exploding for area damage, each Fireborn can bounce up to six additional targets. Interesting. Incre redu reduced by damage per bounce? Hmm, I'll be interested to see how that turns out, but I'm almost to that level, so I'll be able to test that out pretty soon. So let's uh, let's go light some signal fires, shall we? And well, it just wouldn't be Diablo 3 AH free uh, unless I forgot to turn Monster Power on. So I just logged out and switched Monster Power on before fighting anything, and that was weird. Only one elite, and the rest must be on top of the stairs. That's, oh, that's not a good spot to be. I forgot these guys sort of run past you there. I'm uh, interested... Be curious how this locust swarm works. Uh, I'll test it out a bit more and get back to you guys. Well, we hit level 28 in a hurry. Seems like the uh, experience income is ramping up a little bit now that I'm in Act 3. So I still nowhere near my um my actual level yet. It seems like I'll pick up some of this gear and I'll check out what the level of the area is. Let's um grab one of these here. I've got level 22, so I reckon I reckon most of it's between level 20 and 23 or something maybe. So. So, uh, considering we're level 28 now, we're still out leveling content by fair margin. How am I, how am I knowing if these locusts are hitting them? I can't quite tell the range from the uh, visualization of the skill there. It's kind of weird. Maybe I can test these locusts on these uh, barricades. If it destroys them, we'll know we're in range. No, no range there. It might not. It might not actually work on them. All right, so it worked there. Let's see if I can find the max range on these. Uh, okay, so it's a bit close. It jumps around between targets, but um, the first cast needs to be sort of within range there. So I'll keep using it for a little while and see how it feels. Oh, I forgot when I leveled that I actually um, got those new skills. So let's uh, let's try out the flash fire. I'm I'm not sure. I kind of like standard AOE, but six targets could be it could be better. The reduction in damage. I'm not sure how it all works out. And I think I'll switch up this locust swarm for now. I'm not quite satisfied with how that's working for now. Ooh, wall of zombies. Yeah, let's let's give that a go. That could be fun. 82 mana. Oh yeah, should be right. I want to try out this wall of zombies. It looks awesome from what I've seen. Oh yes, that's awesome. It's kind of like a uh, bone wall from D2. I don't think anything can really get past it while it's up. That's awesome. That, should, that could be pretty cool on bosses. I'm curious to see how it works. Uh, well, zombie wall has a bit of a cooldown, so... So I think it's more of a defensive or utility skill choice rather than a, a damage skill choice, so putting on the right click slot might not be the best idea. Okay, I have to keep tinkering, tinkering with these skills until I find something satisfying for it. 
Let's uh, let's stick with Acid Cloud for a little while now. We know we know Acid Cloud works well. It's a uh, it's a solid choice. It's a solid choice for this. It's got awesome AOE. So in some uh, in some vague channel news, I didn't really get too many videos uploaded over the weekend. Um, I think I only got one uploaded, and that might have even been on Friday. So a little bit lax, a little bit lax, but I do have a valid excuse. Uh, we are kind of getting organised to move houses. We've had to move houses pretty suddenly, so we're like packing up everything and trying to get a new house lined up, and it's all pretty annoying because it's very close to Christmas. So I w I'm thinking that over the next month. Um, uploads are not going to be as reliable as they have been in the past, but I'm trying to plan out as much content as I can in advance so so I can have uh, can have videos ready to go for you guys. And um, I'm thinking maybe maybe if there is a period where I can't make any real videos, I still want you guys to have access to good content. So I'm thinking I might like do some channel recommendations and things like that. Recommend some good YouTube and uh, Twitch channels that you guys can check out in my absence. <laughs> Um, so that that might be something to sort of just keep some content coming up on the channel while I'm gone. But I'll, I'll let you guys know a bit close to look closer to then. I've still got about a, a week before I can, uh, have to move out or anything like that. So, but yeah, I'll let you guys know what's happening with that. But uh, rest assured that today I have made a ton of videos. So this is actually the third video I've sort of put in production for today. I've organised two other ones, so I should be uploading these all over over tonight and releasing them. Uh, at different points during during the day tomorrow. You might not actually get this video first. Maybe I'll give you this video first, just uh, since I've been talking talking in that order. <laughs> but um, yeah, there you go. A bit of bit of insight into my channel organization. I'm sure, that's I'm sure that's enthralling. This uh this area here, Skycrown Battlements. I'm starting to realize is an excellent place to get, get elites. I'm thinking about adding it into my actual uh, Inferno Archives of Farming runs, just because of the uh, there's always at least four elites in here it seems, so pretty good spot to go maybe after hitting the uh, core of Ariat and then the uh, the, t the tower, tower of the Dam level 1 going from there to here rather than to Ari to the uh, Crater 2 and then hitting Crater 2 after because Crater 2 has excellent trash mob density and sometimes you don't have 5 stacks so could be good to come in here first and get some get some awesome elite kills and uh, might be a little bit of a, a degradation in experience income, but uh, should give me some more loot because of the amount of the elites. So it should be interesting. It'll be something I'll be testing out, and if it turns out it's awesome, I'll I'll be sure to make a video on it, as I often do. Now I've actually had a, a rare voodoo mask drop for me, and uh, despite ours being quite good and having a socket, which is awesome, and yeah, experience. It's it's a really good helmet. I just think that was one that I crafted. Um, it's quite low level now, only level 17, so what do we have here? Oh wow, increased mana regen, decent vitality roll, the same amount of experience, and a socket. Uh, I think... Hmm... I think that might be worth equipping. I'll wait until I do a run back to town though. It's not a not a desperate need need to equip sort of thing. So I'll, um, I'll wait and then I'll get, I'll get that gem back later at town. I'll um, sal salvage up that other one for the free gem return. So I think I've figured out what the uh, the draw for this firebomb rune is. It seems like the uh, the fire trail cinders or whatever they're called jump by quite a distance. You can sort of see them jumping around there from mob to mob. So uh, that means if things are a bit more spread out, which is actually pretty common in like this sort of area here, the Skycrown Battlements and Stone Fort and uh, Ruckus Crossing and a few other places in this act, uh, these like these fallen and stuff tend to spread out a lot and run around. So. Having something that bounces around, look at that, look how far it bounces, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, having something that bounces around between them is actually really good, even with the damage reduction. When they're clustered, I think you're going to be doing a bit less damage, but uh, maybe maybe it even bounces to something and then back to it, so if it hits the same mob twice, then it might actually end up doing more damage, so uh, I'm sort of interested to see how that works out. I'll uh, try and pay attention and see how many times it bounces. I think it might just it might just keep bouncing on, but it might bounce back as well. If it bounces back, that'd be pretty cool. But uh, it's it's an interesting rune, and I can certainly see the uh, the reasoning behind it now, the attractiveness of it. It's been quite enjoyable slowly figuring out the uh, witch doctor. It's my main reason for choosing the class for this run in the first place. Having choosing the only one I really don't have any experience with. The uh, only other one I don't know so much about is the monk, but I have I have played the monk a bit and. Uh, 
just don't find it terribly exciting, at least not in the lower levels, so I think the Wish Doctor is a bit more interesting to level. And uh, I'm really enjoying learning the different, the ins and out of the class and having you guys throw me some tips every now and then and things like that, so it's pretty cool, I'm glad. How don't I already have an achievement for this? <laughs> it must be like a, a speed achievement for lighting all those or something. I'll check it out in a sec. <laughs> what is it? Ah, light the fires before killing the demonic hell bearers at the five signal beacons. Well, there you go. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> I kind of like having all these achievements I haven't looked at and just discovering them by accident like this. So, uh, now we're moving into Stonefort. We've just finished lighting all the signifiles, and now we've got to go ahead and rage the catapults. I think I'll, I'll go ahead and raise the catapults on this run. These are... Stonefort's pretty cool, and it's made more interesting now in the leveling by the fact that the, the Key Wardens are in the lower difficulties as well, so... They can present a bit of a challenge, though. I don't I don't find this Key Warden particularly challenging, and he has been nerfed as well. I didn't even find him that challenging before, to be honest, but uh, that's more because if you draw him into a choke when he had the Illusionist affix before, uh, all of his illusions, illusions would just cluster up, and it wasn't really wasn't an issue. But uh, I think apparently a lot of people were having difficulties with him. I guess it depends on the build, but um, maybe melee characters were having a lot of problems with him. But yeah, he's, he's, he's not too bad. I think the Act 2 Key Warden is pro probably the worst one for me. Maybe, actually, the Act 4 Key Warden is definitely the worst, but you, don't, you only have to encounter him once, so <laughs> he's not too much of an issue. Ah, oh, some rare boots. Our boots are pretty terrible. Uh, pickup radius is nice and vitality is nice, but some rare ones with move speed might be nice. Oh, what do we got here? And we lose some health, we gain some move speed, uh, extra experience, still get, keep the pickup radius. Let's just uh, put those on for now so I can move through this zone a bit quicker. But I'll keep these ones aside. Maybe to use a bit later if we need a bit more a bit more uh, tanky gear going on. It looks like the uh, Templar, when he leveled, he's got he gotten his armor upgrade. <laughs> when they hit certain levels, I think they uh, they reach different tiers of armor and they each have three three or four tiers of armor, something like that. I know, that was pretty funny. I just started noticing that it was looking a bit different. And level 29. Awesome stuff. Hopefully we can hit level 30 and do some like sick, sick crafting when we go back to town. I'm starting to get lots of uh, lots of items, so I should have a pretty good amount of materials. So I think we might be able to do that by the end of this run. We'll see. I'll get pretty close at least. So if you guys have been with me since Act One, you might remember that I uh, showed you guys a few guys a few events in the game that were designed in such a way that you could just skip over them. Well, Act Three has one of those as well, and that's these catapults. So you just have to talk to this guy and then keep running. And that catapult will do itself. The first and second catapults you can do this with. The third catapult where you have to wind the winch up yourself. You actually do have to help out on that one. But um, that's, that's pretty pretty funny stuff I reckon. <laughs> As you can see the catapult level is starting to rise up now. Oh, we're, okay we've encountered a goblin, an elite pack, and the key warden. So... Stuff's a little bit nasty. I don't think we're going to be able to kill the goblin. Like, I've barely taken his health down. Just not doing anywhere near enough DPS on Monster Power Turn. Nah, he gets away, the little jerk. Hate those things. But, uh, let's, let's go grab some health, guys. Getting a little bit low on the health there. I'm fine. I find that the Key Warden does often spawn with an Elite. I think he's... I think the devs, when they organised the Key Warden, they might have just tied his, his spawn pattern where he spawns in with the Elite spawn pattern, so... There's a good chance he'll spawn with an with elite pack. So that makes him that makes him a little bit more threatening, since you need to uh, worry about both those. He's got a ton of health. Whoa, okay. Alrighty, that's not so good. So I don't want to get nailed by all of those frozen bodies. Man, that, that hammered my health, and I have, I have a ton of vitality. That's insane damage. So Key Warden, maybe I was, uh, maybe I spoke too soon when I was saying this guy wasn't too threatening. Might be a bit of a different case in uh, leveling in hardcore. So let's watch out for those frozen bodies falling us there. There's some more there. Just try and snipe him from up here. Maybe I can clear out this stuff here. Whoa. Okay. Throw some more acid down there. What's the, oh, there's the uh, that's the catapult completing. <laughs> um, let's uh, put a slow one in here. Man, this is like a boss fight. Look how much health he's got. I would probably just skip over him, but uh, I kind of enjoy the challenge, so we'll try and do him. I've got, got plenty of potions, they're off cooldown. 
I, I'm now aware of the danger he presents. That's uh, that's an important thing in hardcore, is actually being aware of the dangers, because often it's something that you're not expecting that'll kill you, or you'll lose concentration on something like that, and something unexpected will happen. Let's uh, just make clear out all this other stuff so nothing's in our way. I don't want to get body blocked by one of those pterodactyl things when he's casting. Oh, okay, spirit walk. I'm not so in the habit of using spirit walk yet, so... <sighs> oh, man, I thought, I thought I was going to die then. Heart skip, which shit. Okay, just, just focusing. I got like... Whew, got that heart leapt up, up into the back of my mouth sort of feeling for a second there. That's why, that's why you hate play hardcore though. Oh yes, that is why you play hardcore. I need to resummon my pets, holy crap. Of course they're dead. He does so much damage. Alright, let's let's stay up here and get him from up here. He doesn't seem to do so well casting his... Is that bouncing to him? Yeah, there we go. Keep him distracted by those pets over there and hit him with these AoEs. Are those cinders bouncing to him? Yeah, they are. Good stuff. Alright, this is all we want. Let's put another slow on him there. Oh man. He does so much damage. It's ridiculous. It's like the stacking, because each one of those is is an o its own AoE nuke, and when they're all stacked up on top of each other like that, it's nasty. Sometimes they spread out a little bit, but uh, yeah. Oh man. <laughs> and check out his health, still halfway. Alright, look, let's free some of these pets. Tempile's probably gonna die. No, Tempile's hold. Templar's holding it together. He's got better composure than I do. <laughs> I kind of wouldn't mind drawing him onto these stairs, actually. Um, so he stops sort of teleporting around so much. That'd be nice. But, uh, at least, at least we're pretty safe here now, and that's that's kind of the main thing. Let's see if I can get him with another slow and hit him with some more AOEs there. There we go. That's that's pretty good there. Starting to get him down now. Only 25% health left. Keeps teleporting out of range, the bastard. Get back here. Come on, you're almost dead. Easy does it. There we go. Come on, Zareth. Your time has come. Whoa, look at how much those ones are stacked up. That would have been a death experience there. My pet certainly felt it. <laughs> If only we got a legendary from him, that would have made that fight suitably epic. Alright, let's go. Oh, let's go get the rest of these catapults done. Alright, so here's the next skippable cat catapult. Let's just book it. Get out of here. Sorry, got no time. You'll have to do it yourself. And here's the only catapult that we actually do have to help with. But we can do this pretty quickly as well if we just focus on sort of hitting this switch whenever it comes up. I want to do it fast enough so he doesn't shout at me. He always yells at me. It makes me feel sad. Come on, come on, come on. We've got it. We've got it. Don't worry. Don't need to yell. Don't need to yell. We've got it. We've got it. There we go. It's all good. It's all good. Okay, let's see if we can fool him into not talking and then whether he still says the same thing at the end. Where he's like, sorry, tell, don't tell the commander I yelled at you. <laughs> You are perfectly even-tempered, man. What's the problem? <laughs> and there we go. There's the end of that zone. And that would be... Oh, no, that won't be the end of the episode. Let's go do some crafting, actually. We've got a sick amount of crafting materials. Alright, we've got our crafting materials and we've got a heap of stuff to salvage up. So let's uh, let's go ahead and get all this together. I don't think anything in here is worth, worth uh, wearing for ourselves. It's... Uh, it's all a bit too low level at the moment. Oh, I accidentally salvaged my boots. <laughs> oh well, maybe we can craft some new boots. Uh, now, I did want to put on this new helmet here, so... Yes, I think that's worth it. I did have the scare with Zareth, but I don't think we'll have... I don't think we'll encounter anything quite as nasty as he was for a little while. So let's go ahead and put that ruby in there. And stick that on there, and I'll see what, see what we can craft. 
Ah, so it seems like uh, level tw 29 was it? Or maybe level... Yeah, level 29 was the, uh, the level to get for crafting. We've, we've unlocked all of these master tier ones, so we've got master greaves, master mail bands, master plate mail and some shoulder plates so since the shoulder plates are rares I think I'll be rolling these first we've got a pretty high int roll but the level difference should mean that the affix range is much higher for shoulders so let's roll three shoulders there we go we got a strength one it's nothing good for us oh wow a large strength roll there it gives us an indication of what we could possibly get Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> lucky, lucky last on that one. 44 intelligence, uh, extra pickup radius, and some other some other junk stats. But you know, a little bit of a DPS boost there. Uh, now I'm going to leave all the equipping to the end because someone requested that I show like a before and after, and I, I think that's a pretty cool idea. So we'll um we'll equip everything at the end, and then uh, see the difference we get from our crafting session. Have everything sort of come together all at once like that. A bit more exciting than doing it. Uh, doing the in incremental upgrades. So we've got some chest pieces here. Let's roll Let's roll two of these and see how we go. Oh wow, okay, that's pretty good. 66 vitality, 16 extra experience, and a socket. That's uh, that's quite the upgrade there. 660 extra health. That's gonna take us up by quite a bit. Yeah, I do really wanna roll these extra braces, so uh, I think I'm gonna, gonna go pretty hardcore at these, like, Boots. Mm, we've got rare boots, so I don't really want to roll boots too much. So let's uh, stick with these male bands. I'll roll for all four if I have to. So wow, that's that is terrible. Four vitality. You're a disgrace to your level. There we go. That's a bit. That's a bit more appropriate. Forty-seven vitality, extra experience, pickup radius. Well, I was gonna try and roll for a DPS one, but that's awesome. Let's uh, <laughs> let's stick with that one. And uh, maybe maybe we'll roll some boots, or maybe we'll see if there's any any new weapons actually. Although we do have a pretty pretty solid weapon at the moment. Ah yes, okay. Our weapon is very good, but we do have not enough crafting materials for this. Okay. Um, hmm. That's a shame. <laughs> That's all. Wow. We we knew we really need to save up crafting materials for this sword. Then we have some. We have a fair bit of gold. Let's uh. Let's do something irresponsible and blow some gold on some <laughs> some actual gear to just salvage terribly terribly gold inefficient but uh you know we've 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 got the gold to do it what's the cheapest thing in here three three thousand two hundred there we, oh wait might be cheaper in the armor yeah two 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 let's uh let's buy a couple of these and get some more s salvaging materials there I don't, I don't recommend this for the record, Just, uh, I'm just feeling a little bit greedy and want to try and roll one of these swords. If I can get a, a, one with a socket, and I don't even care what the other stats are if it gets a socket, because uh, it will be a DPS upgrade nonetheless. So let's have a look at this. Ooh, that's uh, that's okay. No main stat, but uh, a little bit of a DPS decrease without the gem, but we might be able to put a decent ruby in there, so... Let's, uh, let's go see, see what we can do in terms of rubies and then we'll equip our gear. Hmm, looks like we don't have quite enough rubies yet to uh, to, to uh, make any better, better tiers of rubies, so let's just salvage up this previous axe. Alright, now let's have a look at our DPS before before and after the upgrade. I think we're mostly getting vitality actually. Oh, we've got some more intelligence on there, so let's take a look at this. Put this fella in here. Two, that's about a, a little bit better DPS, not much, but uh, we've got a bit of extra life on hit, which is nice. Uh, the blind on hit's kind of kind of not that important. Maybe we can craft some better swords up in the next episode, but uh, here we go. Now let's take taking a look at our life, 2400, up to 2600, up to 33, and then with the extra DPS up to 240 DPS. So we've got 33 and now 240 DPS. Maybe I can edit in like a comparison chart there, but uh, that's... That's some pretty pretty sweet upgrades there. Lost a bit of DPS on the chest, but we should be able to um, put some intelligence gems in our chest base if we have one. Yeah, there we go. A bit of 10 extra intelligence. 247 with the intelligence gem. That's some pretty solid crafting session upgrades, I would say. Uh, pretty good pretty good effort overall. We're starting to uh, kit out in a fair few rares now as well. We're moving into that point of the game where rares start to outshine and become more available than magic items. 
Uh, every now and then we'll still find we'll probably still find a decent magic item that is just better than the rares we have access to, but uh for the most part, we'll probably be looking in, into getting rares, which means crafting is going to get a fair bit more expensive because rares take a ton more materials and, and actual gold to craft as well. So that's it for today's episode. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.